Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is the show where we demystify technology at a level where you will understand all kinds of stuff inside your devices, like your routers and your computers, much better-ish. We have a router here, so today we have help me router. understand this. So we will demystify your router today. Um, yeah, it's, this is the episode where, you know when you like take a, la uh, a laptop into your home and you want to connect wirelessly, and all of a sudden it drops the signal, or you know, you're having problems having a persistent connection. Mm -hmm. um, what we're going to show today in the show is how to uh, resolve that by doing some updates inside both the router and your computer, as well as some other tips, you know, uh, on how to optimize your router. You may not have gone there, you know, uh, either ever gone in there or go there regularly, so we're going to show you what to look for. Yeah, if you've got one of these sitting on your desktop and it's been sitting there for the last five years and you haven't done anything with it, this show might be for you. Right, there you go. Good. Okay, so uh, today on Lab Rats, demystifying your router and uh, getting a little maintenance at the same time. Today on Lab Rats. Well, of course, you update your computer. It makes a lot of sense to do that, right? You upgrade mm -hmm. your operating system and various pieces of software. Well, it turns out that this router, all routers, are mini computers with software in them. Yeah, a lot of them use Linux on there. Oh, there you go. And uh, the software we refer to, which sits on a chip, is called firmware, mm -hmm. right? So that can be upgraded. Yes, sir. And if you've ever run into a problem where you can't, like let's say you get a new laptop and you come in and you try to connect to your wireless router and it just won't connect or it won't hold the connection properly. It drops on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Chances are there is a problem, an incompatibility between the firmware in your router and the chipset or the drivers that run the wireless connectivity on your laptop. Right, and this is especially true if you're running something like 802.11n, which is still a temporary specification as we tape this. Yep. Uh, it's mostly completed, but theoretically there are some small tweaks that are going to be uh, created, and different manufacturers may implement it in slightly different ways. That's true. I, I ran into this with my, with, my, uh, with my folks. My mom had his old uh, Sony laptop, a couple years old, running, running Windows XP, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, bought a new uh, a router with N, or mm -hmm. the, pre the draft N, and connection would drop, connection would drop, connection mm -hmm. would drop. And they were going crazy because they're like, well, the old router worked fine. Right. So, so this solution that we're going to provide you today will show you how to kind of get around that. Yeah, and it's worth noting here that uh, that's a very physical manifestation of a problem with the router, your connection dropping. But there's other reasons to do an upgrade on your firmware as well. For example, security patches. You said this is a little computer. It has Linux on it. There's known vulnerabilities on some of these things, so hackers that they you know, if they know that you're running a Linksys router, which is a big flag, it says Linksys in the SSID in your network name, they can say, ah, here's how to attack it and I'll get in. So updating the firmware not only will fix those little problems that you might have maintaining a connection, but they could also fix any security holes that are yeah. known to be in there. Absolutely. Um, although a word of caution, right? And always. We, we always love to like upgrade and fix and that sort of thing. Sometimes, you know, if things are working fine, if your laptop connects to your router just fine, you may don't want to do anything. You may just want to mm -hmm. leave it alone. Because introducing new versions of software, as much as they fix security flaws, can also uh, introduce new bugs in the system yeah. and make, make life worse for you. Yeah, how many times have you installed a Windows security fix that uh, completely messed your system up? Yeah, many or, times. Or Mac one, to be fair. To be fair, right. Yeah. yeah. No, it's true. It's true. So I'm going to show you how to do it. You know, you may want to go back to the original factory setting. We'll show you that too, mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't work. Okay, so let's start with this. There's two pieces of the puzzle. There is the firmware, the software in the router, right. whether it's a D-Link or Linksys or Netgear or whatever it is. And on your computer, whether you're running Windows or Mac, uh, you're going to want to see if there are updates for the uh, wireless connectivity of the drivers and in the mm -hmm. case of Windows. In the Mac, I guess, is a profile, right? Yeah. And would you want to update that on a Mac? Um, I haven't ever done it myself, okay. but I'm sure there's ways to upgrade all we'll those things. Right. I mean, we're talking primarily about Windows here. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so first of all, let's go over to, I'm going to go to, to Linksys here. Uh, Linksys by Cisco.com is the new Linksys web address. And you're going to want to, uh, you know, I've taken, I've actually popped in here into the support area. Let's go, let's go from the, the top here just to show people how to do it. So let's enter your model of serial number. Your serial number is going to be found on the back side of this thing, on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that there, Michael. Um, or you can also, um, if you actually get into the router itself using this, the, the trick I'll show you in a minute, you'll actually see the, uh, the actual yeah. model number. Tell you all the details. Right. But and important to make sure you're using the right one because remember what we were just saying about uh, upgrading and uh, suddenly having more problems? Yeah. If you get the wrong 
firmware and try to push it onto this thing, you could actually damage this to the point of not working at all. So that make sure you're putting the right firmware on this. I know that I have a WRT31, I think it's 0N yes. on this one, right? That's the correct router. That is. There. So I'm going to put that here into the Linksys by Cisco website on the support area. I'm going to say click. Uh, it's going to show me uh, my options. I'm going to choose to get the, the downloads. I'm going to go to the download area. And I select my, the version. The version will, be show, will show up mm -hmm. on the label underneath as well. Mm -hmm. I know in this case it's version number one. And uh, below we will see a list of all of the, the downloads and drivers. Now the firmware itself is just a piece of software, mm -hmm. right? So you're actually going to execute, you're going to pull down, download it onto your desktop as a file. And as you can see here, there is the, uh, the firmware listed. Notice that it actually has a version number mm -hmm. with a build number. So in this yes. particular case, it's 1.0.07 build 14. That's the latest firmware version. Right? Just like you have mm -hmm. a version 1, 2, 3 of the various pieces of software. Mm -hmm. So you want to double check to see if you have the latest version of the firmware on the router already. Right. So and if it's an older number or a lower number, then technically you might have... Uh, you have something old, so you want yeah, to update it. You want to update that. If it's the current number, then you, you don't. Right? You're fine. So if we get into... So let's go into the router, because we need to gather some information, too, before we do actually do this. Mm -hmm. so, so to get into the router, in your web browser, connected via a wire, not wireless. So we're going to choose mm -hmm. to connect to one of the ports in the back, which is numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in mm -hmm. some cases. Connect to an uh, Ethernet connection. Right. Again, not 100% necessary to do this, but it is very safe. You don't, don't want to drop the connection yeah, you, in the middle of this. Of a, of a firmware upgrade, yeah. right. So we want to plug it into here, not into the internet port, into one of those one to five. Okay. And then we're going to plug the other one into the ethernet port on your computer. In my case, I have the port on the side here. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, uh, if it's a desktop, you want to do it on the back, perhaps. Okay. So I'm going to type in 192.168.1.1, which I know is the... IP, internal IP address of this router. Right. Because that's the case for all Linksys routers. Yeah. This is called surfing the box, by the way. Is it? Surfing the box. Surfing the, surf box. the box. Um, and as soon as you do that, uh, you're going to get an authentication request, a user ID and password. Right. Now, the default on Linksys is a blank username, mm -hmm. and the password is Linksys. Right. If you haven't changed it. Oh, this sounds like a security problem already. It is. You're right. Exactly. And we'll get to that in a second as well. Um, now, all routers have, you know, the various brands have their own different IP addresses, and we'll mm -hmm. put a link here on, on the screen to show you a website that lists the, the most common IP addresses. Mm -hmm. You can also find this IP address for your router uh, in your manual if you still have that kicking around. Yeah. Don't, don't throw away the manual. Don't throw yeah, right. So I'm going to click in here, and I'm going to get the interface. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want to do here is pop on over to my administration area. And I want to look for the, actually, no, I want to go to the, so I'm going to click there, and then I'm going to go below it to the, uh, the menu that says firmware upgrade. Right, and this will differ from router to router, even if you're using a Linksys. Some older models may be slightly different. D-Link will have a different way of doing this, but it's all more or less the same. It's yeah. similar. Yeah. So on the right-hand corner, and this it says firmware version is uh, 1.07 LSHND. Okay. So now we know if we're going to the website to look for the firmware update, we need to get something that's better than better that. Better than that. Now that looked to me to like an earlier version because I think the, the current build is 14. So I'm good to go to upgrade this. Good. Okay. So to do that, I'm literally going to download that file and then I'm going to use this browse button here in this area to browse to the file I've downloaded on my desktop. Okay. So you download it from the Linksys website, save it on your on desktop, desktop or in a special location. Right. And then I'm going to say click start to upgrade. Now okay. what will happen is the router will reach out to the desktop, it'll grab the file, it'll mm -hmm. start to process it. It will update the chip, so the firmware will be upgraded on the chip in the router, and then it will reboot. During the reboot, nothing will be available. The internet will go away. Don't panic. Wait. Well, count to 20 if you have to. Go and get a cold beverage. Uh, and when you come back, the router will be back up and should be functioning mm -hmm. again with the latest firmware upgrade. Unless, uh, if you did what we told you not to do, you went and got the wrong firmware upgrade. Right. Then now, it might stay down for a long, long time. Now, there is a way around that if you do make a mistake, okay? If you make a mistake in this process, on the bottom of all routers, there is either a pinhole or a reset button. In this particular case, you probably are not going to see that on camera there, but there's a little red reset, mm -hmm. and there's a little button in there. So you're going to push a pin into that or a pen or something like that. Mm -hmm. If it's a little pinhole, then you want to put a, um, a pin inside it mm -hmm. um, and, and click until you feel resistance, and then hold it for 10 seconds or so. Mm -hmm. 
right? And that will reset the router to the original factory settings, um, and you can at least then start to build it again. And uh, you know, but you're gonna have to reinstall your internet connection if that's the case. You know, putting the information about yeah. your provider if you need to do that from a DSL perspective, uh, and change all of your settings yeah. again. Do not do this lightly. Just like, oh, I screwed this up, and it'll erase everything. That's right, exactly. So the other piece of the puzzle now, if we've, once we've done that, that should solve most problems. If it doesn't, this is the other way to do it would be to go to your manufacturer of your, of your uh, computer. In my case, it's Dell. I'm going to go to dell.com, support.dell.com. And I'm going to tell it the, the, the model, make and model of my computer. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for it and go get drivers and downloads. Again, you can find this at the bottom of your uh, computer if it's a notebook. Right. And um, on the back, potentially, if it's a desktop. So it'll have a little sticker that says not only the model, but the make, like yeah, if I it's a special SKU. I'm wondering if here, in the case of Dell, they yeah, have So it'll be a, along this side right here. Yeah, they have a um, service a tag which mm -hmm. you can input into Dell. Many, I think many of the other branded computers will have this kind of technology mm -hmm. as well. Yep. You know, punch that in. It will actually list all the drivers and downloads available for the system. Now, you're going to go in, and you're going to choose your operating system. And then you're going to go into category. And what I like is so you're going to choose chipset here. And it will redraw. And it will show you the chipset downloads available. If I click mm -hmm. on the plus sign here, it shows the Intel driver, mm -hmm. a mobile chipset. And uh, actually, there's a Ricoh driver, which I think is probably or maybe an internal chipset of some sort. So do the most obvious. It's an Intel driver with a mobile chipset. Mm -hmm. You want to, again, it's a download. It, you execute it. It will, it will install, reboot the system, and the chipset drivers will be updated. Mm -hmm. In some cases, if you have a separate Wi-Fi card, yes. you're going to want to download the driver for the Wi-Fi card as well. Yeah, so with newer ones, they often integrate that into the chipset, as you call it. In other cases, it's a completely separate component. In this case, I think if I go to the category, and let me see if I've got networking here. There, may be a, there is a network category here. So let's see what's available for that. Yeah, so networking is often the, the wired one that you have on the side of your computer, but sometimes it also contains wireless. Right. And, I, and oh, here we go. It says wireless 1390 WLAN mini card. Now, pro the problem with the Dell systems and many of these systems is they have lots of different options. Yeah. So you may actually want to call you know, the, the, the computer company and ask them, you know, tell them what you've got, and have them determine which driver is best for you. Mm -hmm. You're going to download this. You can execute it. You're going you're gonna to update that software. Uh, and now both, you have the latest firmware on here, you have the latest software on here, and your connectivity should be improved. Hopefully. 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 Right? Uh, and that's not necessarily uh, uh, going to be uh, guaranteed, because of what we talked about before, but mm -hmm. in most cases I found, especially with the new routers, with older computers, you're going to improve your connectivity instantaneously just by this one single move. Mm -hmm. So that's the trick. Um, you know, we could talk about a whole bunch of other router you know, features in here. I think we should probably leave that for another episode because there's lots to talk about there. There is like parental controls and all these other yeah. things that you can do. Other tips and tricks. Yeah. So leave that for another time. Anyway, so let's take a break. And when we come back, uh, we're going to have picture time and uh, maybe a couple other uh, tips and tricks uh, before we go. So that's after this. Now, I know all your juices are flowing now. You're dying to get your hands on the router. You're like, what did they say about the thing here? Uh, where do I do it? And don't worry about it. We actually have a solution for you. Um, on the butterscotch.com network, we have thousands. Do we have thousands? No, we have more than a thousand uh, pieces of video, mm -hmm. and half of those are released are tutorials to teach you how to do this stuff step by step. And we have this fantastic 10 part series, don't we, Sean? We do. Uh, called Understanding, you, Understanding Your Home Network Router. 10 part series. It takes you through all these key pieces of router administration. Was that uh, from Doc Callahan? Doc Callahan did it, yeah. All right. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so go check that out at butterscotch.com. Click on the, uh, the tutorials tab, uh, and you'll find that. There's 10 parts. It talks all about the nitty-gritty of this step-by-step, -step, really clear, and you will love it. I want to see it now. Okay, well, let's go see a clip. I'm sure Matt will stick in a, a, a little clip of one of his tutorials so you can get a taste of it, and then on your own power, on your own time, you can go and watch the entire 10-part series. Welcome on deck. I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. Back in the router settings again under wireless and wireless security, you can see here that we have security mode WEP. Now if you look down, there's WPA Personal, WPA Enterprise, WPA2 Personal, WPA2 Enterprise, Radius. You can generate, you can put in a phrase. 
And here again, there's plenty of help telling you about all of the different kinds. Now, it's not just your computer on your network that may have problems connecting or have you know, that connectivity issue. It mm -hmm. could be you know, another device, lots of devices on our network these days. Yep. So you may want to have a look at uh, updating the firmware on any device that happens to be having a connectivity problem. So um, I know Matt has the sling box. Recently, had some, he's all sad. He's got a big sad face here. Mm -hmm. and it's not connecting through his router right now. And now what's happened is his, the firmware on the sling box has been updated recently, but the router hasn't. Mm. So if you're going to do one and you have connection issues, you probably want to do the other as well. That's probably going to solve your problem. Yeah. So the same goes for an Apple TV, a wireless printer, or whatever else that might be firmware upgradable. There you go. Good. Okay, great. All right, and now picture time. Picture time. Good. So from our friend John in Brisbane in Australia, he uh, sent us a picture of himself earlier. Mm -hmm. Now he's sending us pictures of things in his backyard, including this. Do you know what this is? Uh, no, it's a bird of some it's a flavor. Bird of some sort. I've taken a lot of pictures bird of, of bird in my bird time. Bird of parakeet. No, I don't know. This is a kookaburra. A kookaburra. A kookaburra. Oh, okay. So there you go. So a kookaburra okay, would one... like something put on the barbecue. <laughs> you could put this on the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. But uh, I, I have yet to see one of these up here, probably because they don't come up here. So thank you for sending that up, right. John. And uh, he also sent us a picture of oh. a snake, a green snake. I hate snakes. And these were both in his backyard. They were? They were in his backyard. I'm not going to Australia. Yeah. I swear, yeah. I had this wicked phobia. I lived in Singapore when I was a kid, yeah. and I encountered snakes, and I terrified them. You so. know they have snakes in Canada, right? Yeah, I know, but like, they're all, they generally sell used cars. That's it. <laughs> they tend not to crawl Feedback around. at labrass.tv. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and uh, that was it. Speaking yeah. of which, you can send your pictures of your snakes and your kookaburras too. <laughs> Snakes sell more things than just used cars at labrass.tv. Right, or more simply. Feedback at labrass.tv. There you go. All right. All right, well, uh, <laughs> thanks for pushing play this week. Thanks for uh, coming to us and uh, enjoying our warped sense of humor. Um, my name's Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. Don't forget to visit budgetsbutterscotch.com for lots more tech content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Are you ready? So now you have a nice secure connection. You want to type the IP address of the, what are you laughing at? <laughs> it's grinning. Uh, the, <laughs> what? I'm just watching, carry on. <laughs> I can't go through when you guys, why am I drunk? <laughs> the point is we weren't rolling the uh, close up camera this episode. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's why you're laughing. <laughs> why not? Oh, because I'm supposed to show it to that camera? Yes. It's okay. Um, Let's start from the top. It's okay.